Welcome back, everybody. This week in America and the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. Website, of course, thisweekinamerica.us. As mentioned, Dr. Harry Overline is our special guest on the program today, a clinical psychologist in practice since 1976, recently retired after 32 years at California State University, teaching courses in family therapy, couples counseling, and much more. He's the author of Journey to Love. That's the book we'll be talking about on today's program. Journey to Love, Development of SSOR, that Successful Significant Other Relationship. And I'll ask about that in a second. But first of all, Dr. Overline, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. I'm pleased to be here. I, I really enjoyed the book and fascinated by talking about Successful Significant Other Relationship. Let's sort of lay the groundwork for that, and then we'll get into talking about love, because for most of us, we fall in love, and that's pretty much it, and we hope that it works out that way. But after reading the book, it's like, not so fast. There's really a whole lot more to it than that. What are we talking about here with the SSOR? What are we talking about? Yeah, what, what do you mean by successful, significant other relationship? Okay, well, that to me is a con- contemporary or novel definition of love. Because uh, in the book, you probably noticed, I talk about the history of love. Yes. When we evolved from primates, and then uh, Greek love, courtly, I mean Christian love, courtly love, romantic love. And now I say, because of the uh, divorce rates in America, now the first marriages, 50% divorce rates, second marriages, 67%. Divorce rates, third marriages, 74%. And not only that, but we've had a significant decline in marriages. Matter of fact, a study done by Pew Institute discovered in 2010 that marriages had dropped 5% from 2009. And when they compared it with 1960, they discovered that marriages had dropped 20%. So clearly, we have some very significant problems with regard to love, and I'll be talking about it because I believe that we have, we believe that love is something we fall into, and what I say in the book, no, love is something we transcend into, that we have to rise into. It's interesting you say in the book, Journey of Love, Dr. Harry Overline, our guest on the program today. And by the way, you can go to our website, link on, get all the information. The book is Journey to Love. It's available at exlibris.com, amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com. And you say one of the motivators for writing the book was that we do have a problem with uh, the concept and the practice of love. Let's talk about concept of love. Uh, Do we have a proper definition of what actually love even is? Well, uh, yes, because again, uh, I mentioned in the book that my training was almost exclusively, my undergraduate degree was in English literature, my master's and doctorate were in psychology, and my psychology training was exclusively psychology. And my wife and I, of course, have done couple counseling since 1978. We continue to do that. We see individual couples, and we also do workshops in Bodega Bay, California. And uh, what we discovered is that love is not something we fall into. As a matter of fact, recently we have discovered that uh, neurotransmitters are released in the brain. For instance, when we were primates, before we evolved from uh, chimpanzees and gorillas, A woman would be walking by a female primate, she'd be ovulating, the male would pick it up, we think through telepathy and odor, and he would go over and have sex. And at that point, uh, they had no frontal lobe and no second uh, mammalian level of neurological evolution, so uh, there was no concept of love among primates. And when we uh, finally developed our second mammalian level, can you see me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because, uh, okay. Uh, When we developed that, 
we uh, developed not just a feeling, but we still had the chemistry released in our brain. And it's interesting because the chemistry creates testosterone and estrogen, which are sexual hormones. And what that does, that creates us to feel wonderful with the other person. Matter of fact, we call that falling in love. And we now know that those neurotransmitters stop uh, between 6 and 36 months. So my wife and I have come up with the stages of a, uh, of a marriage or stages of a relationship to achieve SSOR. Would you be interested in hearing those stages? Yes, these are the five stages. The book is Journey to Love. Our guest on the program is Dr. Harry Overline. Again, the book is available at exlibris.com, amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, and you can log on to our website, This Week in America, and get uh, that information as well. Something of love we think is so simple, yet you'll find out it's very intricate, and that's what we're talking about, discussed in the book Journey to Love. Dr. Overline, you mentioned the, uh, the different stages of love. Let's start and go through those. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to give you a kind of uh, a context of why stages, because interestingly enough, the concept of falling into love was something that is stimulated, I believe, by the neurochemistry, the neurotransmitters, and those neurotransmitters cause us not only to feel wonderful, it increases our heartbeat. And I believe that we project onto the partner everything we've always wanted about a loving relationship. He or she has all these characteristics. And we are convinced at that point that it's going to last forever until death does us part. As a matter of fact, the first stage my wife and I have observed in working with people over time, we call in lust. Okay, it's when the chemistry is released and we feel wonderful, We've, we're convinced it's going to last forever, very little conflict, very little arguments. And then when, when the neurochemistry changes somewhere between 6 and 36 months, it could change in one person or both people at the same time. We believe that you go into a second phase that I describe in the book called Darth Vader. And the Darth Vader stage is a very critical stage. Honey, you're not what you used to be. Why have you changed? You know, what are you talking about? I haven't changed. I'm still the same person I have always been. And of course, the person who said that didn't know that he or she was projecting onto the other person who they were because right, of right. neurochemistry. And during the Darth Vader phases, I believe most separations occur, most divorces, most domestic violence, chemical dependency. And by that I mean often you'll have a partner say, honey, why are you drinking every night when you come home now? Because I feel better. Because when I come home, you complain or try to give me feedback at things you want me to uh, become or somehow you want me to change. And when I have a few martinis, it, it doesn't bother me quite as much. Also, we have domestic violence during uh, Darth Vader. So that is a, a level that is very problematic. The third level is silly putty, where we begin to work and try to create the other person what we saw in the in lust stage, which was a fantasy of our projection. It wasn't really who they were. Uh, we don't see that as being uh, authentic, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But uh, in the silly putty, we try to make them what they were, and it's quite frustrating, although it can if people can get through silly putty and begin to work with each other and say, uh, together, let's help each other because we do want to be with each other. And the fourth stage is a stage of tolerance. And in the book, I have a bunch of 
exercises and strategies that individuals or couples can participate in to help them begin to develop the components of developing love because again I believe love is developmental and by that what I mean is it's interesting because again since we were primates we have been convinced that love is something we fall into and now uh, I use the analogy isn't it interesting if you wanted to be a teacher you wanted to be a clergy person you wanted to be an electrician you'd have to go through training maybe be an apprentice for some period of time and over time you know develop skills and the ability to manifest whatever you needed to manifest to work in that area or, or to be a parent whatever it happened to be and it's interesting because if I were a military person and I went to be interviewed by you and I said please I love America send me to Afghanistan I want to fight and you say wait a minute you have to go to boot camp first and I say what are you talking about I don't have to go to boot camp I love America that's why I, I've fallen into the love and that's why I want to go and fight and you say no Harry you have to go to boot camp because you have to be trained to protect yourself and to protect others who will be fighting with you because you'll need that kind of training so whatever it is whether you're a clergy person whatever it is we accept the fact that people need experience and training and apprentice experiences over time but we have not done that with love and in my definition of developmental love I say that love is something uh, that we need to develop and I talk about the, the components of love and I talk about intolerance stage developing those skills because I talk about being able to develop an authentic self the, the, the book is, is Journey to Love Development of SSOR Successful Significant Other Relationship Dr. Harry Overline is our guest on This Week in America. Information at our website. The book is available at Ex Libris, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. Rapidly running out of time, a few minutes left in the program. The, the fifth stage is Ferrari. Explain that because I, I, love, the, uh, I love the name of that, uh, that stage. Okay. In Ferrari, see, I believe that typically psychology has excluded what it cannot measure because uh, in the late 1900s actually in the late 1890s it wanted to be a, a, a science like biology and physics so it was only going to test and accept topics that were material that could be seen by our senses we hear it we see it and that we could measure it and uh, interestingly enough that it excluded energy. We now know, ironically, that science has discovered at the moment of death, if people are put on a scale, six ounces of energy leaves the body at the instant of death. And of course, Einstein talked about E equals MC squared, that everything in the universe is either energy or mass, the two manifestations of the same thing. For example, if I took a log, it would be mad. If I put it on the fire, it would give off energy. So let's get back to human beings. That energy is installed in a body. That body is installed in a family. The family is installed in a national context and in a historical context. And Plato said, uh, of course, that in our essence, because see, uh, theology and philosophy dealt with the soul or the essence, they were dealing with the energy in our body, but psychology and science would exclude that because it wasn't something that was measurable, but now we know that it is in our body, and uh, what that and what Plato said is that energy consists of virtues that are inside of us. Let's suppose uh, philanthropy, empathy, uh, caring about other people, wanting to help other people. If you have these virtues 
and on the outside of those uh, forces that I talked about, national era, the family, historical era, uh, if they interfere with the manifestations of our virtues, for instance, who I am as a man, who I am as a father, who I am as a worker, as a friend, if they're not manifesting the flow of those virtues, then I feel <clears throat> unhappy and I don't have raison d'etre, a reason for living in my life. So what Kathy and I discovered was we have to help people find out who they are. And in the book, I do an autobiographical analysis. I ask people to identify the different phases of their life, for, for example, from birth to preschool to elementary would be second phase, third would be uh, high school and then young adulthood. And I say, can you remember in those different phases being involved in activities or experiences that you loved at the time, that you felt passionate, you felt wonderful, you were highly attentive, you wanted to continue to do it. And then I say, okay, in the book, I give a virtues test where people can, uh, through their uh, biographical analysis, discover who they are inside. Doctor, we got about a minute left in the program, and that's at the end of the book where you can actually do a test and get a score. There's an assessment of the stages test in there as well. Uh, the book is fascinating, Journey to Love, Development uh, of SSOR, which is Successful Significant Other Relationship. Dr. Harry Overline has been our guest on the program. Got a few seconds left in the program. Book's available at uh, Ex Libris, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. What I found fascinating, uh, many things in the book, but one is basically if we live a loveless life, it really does have a, a, an impact on the quality of our life, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's very debilitating. Matter of fact, I make an analogy. Just like our body needs food, water, and sleep, I talk about that energy that I refer to as our essence needs love. Love feeds our essence. It facilitates the flow of who we are because in the book I help people find out who they are, help them to begin to manifest these virtues in the outside world. And then I say once you become an authentic I, you can now be in a position to create a loving we which is the beginning of the fifth stage, the Ferrari stage, because without having authentic eyes, I think authentic eyes are prerequisites to create a loving we. It's interesting uh, in the book, and you talk about that, the percentage of people who never discover their authentic self, that's avail information available in the book, and the components of a successful loving relationship is in the book as well. So a lot of talk in, in the history, the, the physical aspects, and a lot of talk about uh, questions you can ask yourself and how you can make yourself into, uh, uh, put yourself into a, a, a significant relationship, a loving, significant relationship. Journey to Love, Development of SSOR, Successful, Significant Other Relationship. Dr. Harry Overline has been our guest on the program. Doctor, we will have you back. Much more to talk about in the book. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Book available once again at Ex Libris, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com as well. And, of course, go to our website, This Week in America.us, and link on for all of that information. You're listening to This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network.